Welcome to this chapter on the rebuilding of the 6L80 transmission. This chapter is divided into three parts, teardown, subassemblies, and reassembly. In this part, you'll learn, the, about, you'll learn about the valve body and planetary gear sets for this unit. My name is Bill Brayton, and I'll be your host for this chapter. It's a great day to fix transmissions, so let's get started. Let's start the valve body breakdown by removing the manual lever position sensor retaining bolt and unplugging the sensor from the transmission electronic control module, or TECM, and remove the sensor. Next, remove nine TECM retaining bolts. Now remove two 53 millimeter bolts from the side of the TECM and remove the TECM. Caution here. These two bolts are two millimeters shorter than the others. Failure to use the correct bolts, that is bolts that are too long, will cause valve body damage. Next turn the valve body over and remove 12 upper valve body bolts. Now turn the valve body over and remove the lower valve body bolts. Keep in mind here we're doing things in this order so all the check balls don't go falling all over the bench and get lost. Now let's remove all the valves from the upper valve body to check for wear and scoring. Do not use a, a, abrasive materials on the valves. These are coated valves and if they are worn or scratched up, the valve body will need to be replaced. There may be aftermarket valves and corrections for the valve body, so keep that, ava keep that availability in mind. While we're at it, let's remove all the valves from the lower valve body as well to check for wear and scoring. Once again, do not use abrasive materials on the valves. These are coated valves and if they're worn or scratched up, the valve body will need to be replaced. Now let's take a look at the pressure switches. Start by removing and discarding the solenoid screen plate. This will expose the pressure switch circuits for testing. If the transmission failure has not spread a large amount of metal through the unit, the TECM can be cleaned and reused. Okay, so before servicing and cleaning the switches, test the pressure switches for proper electrical operation. Keep in mind that cleaning and replacing the membranes and seals will not fix a bad TECM. Now let's use a pencil eraser to place pressure on the switch. The meter will read about 10 ohms resistance. If the reading is incorrect or non-existent, replace the TECM. If the switches are okay, replace the solenoid screen plate. And here again, there are tools available from the aftermarket to disassemble and assemble the pressure switches, so uh, keep that in mind as well. We will use this illustration to correctly place the check ball. Be sure to only use the eighth check ball with the updated separator plate. If the separator is replaced from the dealer, it comes with updates. There is an orifice change and an additional check ball location. That's the eighth check ball we were talking about. The update is designed to address a first gear acceleration deceleration clunk that some customers may find objectionable. Changing the plate is not mandatory. If a new plate from the dealer is used, the valve body will take eight check balls instead of seven with the old plate. Now we can replace this, now we can place the separator plate onto the lower valve body. Then place the lower valve body onto the upper valve body. Next, install one 55 millimeter bolt and five 45 millimeter bolts from the lower valve body side. Torque the bolts to 70 inch pounds. Next, turn the valve body over and install 12 36 millimeter bolts. Torque the bolts to 70 inch pounds. Now, install the TECM onto the valve body and install the two 53 millimeter bolts on the side of the valve body. Caution, just to remember we said about, talked about it on the teardown, on assembly you got to make sure that these bolts are two millimeters shorter than the other. Failure to use the correct bolts, that is bolts that are too long, 
will cause valve body damage. Bolts that are too long will crack the valve body casting internally. And that's it for the valve body uh, as far as assembling it goes. Just make sure you do a good job on the, on the valves and make sure they're free and they fall into their bores on their own weight. Makes for a, 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 just a better job all the way around. Next, install nine Tecum retaining bolts. Torque the bolts to 70 inch pounds. Finally, install the manual lever position sensor retaining bolt and plug the sensor into the Tecum. Torque the bolt to 70 inch pounds. Now we'll take a look at the planetary gear sets and drive hubs. First, clean and dry, dry all planetary gear set components. Inspect all gear teeth for wear and pitting. Inspect the splines for wear. Check bearings for smooth operation as well. If any of these parts are damaged, they must be replaced. The bearing on the rear planet can be removed without damage so we can check the bearings and the gears down inside the rear planet. Now we have the output shaft which can be dis disassembled for cleaning and inspection. The metal likes to hide down underneath the uh, removable gears there. Here we have the 456 clutch hub. This drives the rear planet when the 456 clutch is applied. Take the dampener apart for cleaning during overhaul. Once again, the metal can hide out inside those splines. We don't want to transfer that over to our newly rebuilt transmission. Finally, check the splines for wear and chipping and pitting on the gear teeth on the input carrier. This will conclude the subassembly part of the 6L80 transmission. We want to thank you for participating in our virtual training solutions powered by ATRA. Until next time, let's keep fixing transmissions together.